in the chat channel so you can see it. In the chat you, box. Yeah. yeah, in the chat box. So you can you can join. Right. I can see it. Right now. Yeah. So I will still share my screen where we get started. <sighs> okay. Oh. Yeah, so I'm dead. Let's get started with what we have today. Okay. And um, I'm going to be in a slideshow format. So, um, can you see my screen? Yeah, the 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 giraffe and yeah, I can see it. No, so it's it's on full screen, right? Yeah, not not on full screen actually. Like it still has the uh, still has the how to build. It's not on full screen actually. I can still see your your Jimmy. Go at the top and stuff like that. All right, no issues. Um, so the first thing we we are going to be considering today, which is the major reason why we're here, is the the part where. Uh, so I'm hearing some background noise from your area, so you may want to move. Okay, let, let me just mute my mic. Yeah, thanks for that. All right, so. Just to dive in, the most important topic that we have for today that we are discussing is how to build um, cross dao relationships, which is a very vital thing in our existence here in dao relationships, is a, a very core reason why we're here in dao relationships. And I'll try my best to speed up. We, we don't have so much time. I may not consume all the time we have today. So I'm going to be talking about the uh, five steps involved in building across our relationships and things that we should put in mind. And um, the first one here is sourcing for a potential relationship, right? So the essence of being in the relationship is not only to um, carry out activities or maybe DAO operations that are strictly DAO related, right? So the essence of being in the relationships is to maintain relationships across different companies, organizations, and individuals that join us here in the relationships and the bank lifestyle, as the case may be. So sourcing for a relationship may be the hardest part of the whole process, or uh, maybe uh, not the hardest part, but uh, figuring out um, which relationship, which company, which firm, which uh, uh, community you want to invest your time or your resources or your ideas into. Sometimes it's a hard process. Right? I can speak from my own end where I didn't have so much of um, a choice but to stick to one thing. So I had a few things in my head that were a drive for me. right? So I didn't want to venture into so much shop, but uh, when I stepped in and I saw the yields and then what benefits are there in the community. So those are one of the things that kept me, right? So uh, the DAO space, in the other hand, is a very vast place and uh, we have a lot of people there. Um, we have our own environments in different cases where, where we thrive, where we do things, you know. But uh, as the case may be, being in the environment that best suits who you are is one of the keys right so you know matching contributors to appropriate environments is the one of the keys to maintaining a lot of these relationships and then um, just an instance that we have cited here is when you're trying to build a relationship with another DAO you know having a contributor who doesn't care about being politically correct would not be a good placement within a DAO that takes a stand for gender neutrality yeah, so this can cause uh, brand damage to both the DAO and the contributor trying to get involved. So in my own understanding, in my own words, I would say when you are building a relationship, maybe bankless DAO with some other organization or community, you should make sure that um, you are building and that the contributors that are showing up are aligned to what you want to do. Right, so everybody must align to the vision. So, because of we don't have everyone aligned to the mission and vision of onboarding one billion persons, we have people from different localities who are aligned to just a, a few things on their own. Right, they are aligned to just certain things that are not even in sync with what we are doing here in Bankless Tower. So you 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 come across 
issues with civil attack and then and then um quarrels among contributors and problems here and there right because most times people are not so although we say we are aligned although we say we are following but in the other hand it looks as though that we are not doing a total follow up there right so these are most of the things we can put into consideration um like we you can see my screen uh, one of the takeaways there is to find an environment that um, suits you where you can do a lot of work where you are comfortable where you are in line where you agree to be and then start doing um the work there so this is for the first one you know sourcing for a potential relationship it should be in accordance with who you are what you believe and the, the things you aim to achieve those things should be one of the reasons or uh, most of the reasons that keeps you going in joining an organization or in creating a relationship or a business, whatever, whatever with people. And then the second one that we'll be considering here is um, bumping elbows and contributing slash collecting pull-ups, right? Um, nobody totally cares about how much uh, you know or what you know except you show for work right so i say i say it's a showing for work in something so you step in here and you tell us hey there i am um uh i'm a business consultant i have partnership deals with this firm this firm and this firm you keep telling us and then you are not showing us what you say you are you are not letting us see the, who you are or the things that you are able to do right in the, at the end of the day you you find out that you'll be at the back, right? So you might want to get involved, but until you show concern, until you show care, until you devote your time, until you devote your resources, there's just a little that you can actually do, right? Just a very little. So you need to, another thing that is point there, sorry, I didn't use bullet points in these slides because of some reasons. Um, Another thing you, you need to consider is um, how you treat communities that show up. First, you've considered um, your energy. You've considered your, uh, for lack of better terms, I, I would say your consistency or your involvement in an organization as the first step in the second step, actually. So the next point is how you treat the communities, right? How you treat external communities that show up how would you treat them, right? Do you um, do you see their messages and you skip, or do you reply them? If they're in need of something, how do you react to that? If they bring up ideas, how you, how do you take the ideas, right? So these are some of the things that you have to consider. You know, you have to put in your head that you would you would treat communities that are showing up the way you treat your fellow contributors, or the way you even treat people that you look up to in the organization where you're working, right? Is applicable even in our web two work, even in our day-to-day -day activities, all of these things are applicable. And then another point is just to not burn out, involvement shouldn't be so heavy or hectic, you know? Social and leadership capitals can be built on 20, uh, 60 to 120 minutes in a week, right? So you don't have to, Um, you, you don't have to be there every time and not doing anything. So I would say do, do something, right? Produce value, show what you can do and do them. Okay. So when you are doing all of these things, you find out that you're getting a lot of involvement, you are becoming consistent and you are getting more aligned to what we are doing in the organization whatever organization it is, as the case may be, you become more aligned in that sense, right? So another thing, like I've said, it does not really have to be heavy or crazy, but you need to be there, right? You can decide to work async, as the case may be. A lot of people in the DAO right now uh, that are doing a lot of great job, they don't show up in weekly meetings or weekly calls for some reasons, or um, I would not say because they don't want to, but maybe their schedules are so tight. But if you look at uh, the other side of the story, you find out that they are still dishing out value. They are still bringing in um, enough stops from their own end, right? They have a task, they, they are head spent down to do the task 
and to make sure that it goes well. So these are some of the things that we need to put into consideration. The next thing is attending calls and providing insights or feedbacks, you know, collecting power-ups to demonstrate that you're engaged and participating and making friends. So this is a detailed overview of how to build a cross-style relationship, how to build a cross-relationship, how to build a relationship, and how to do things with different firms and communities and organizations, as the case may be. It just depends on where it's applicable, right? But in my own sense, I said it's applicable everywhere. So this is a detailed guide. So on your own, it's quite detailed. You can go through them. You can save them um, on your Google Drive. So you can be able to assess them or refer back to them even when you want to um, share knowledge or information with people that would be joining at times aside from now. So when you've uh, attended calls, you need to provide insights. You know, when there are things that you have an idea about, you can unmute yourself and speak, you know, collect co-ops to demonstrate that you're engaged and participating and making friends. This is applicable even in the communities that you want to build relationship with. So you might want to develop a partnership deal for bankless consulting and, for instance, WeaverDAO or NIA protocol. And then you want to build a partnership deal, you're not showing up. So I use Johnny and Erin as an example here in Bankless DAO and Tommy of Austin as well. Uh, I use these guys as an example. So they have things they are doing, right? Johnny is from the list of DAO. You can see that Johnny literally attends all the, the relationship um, weekly things, you know, shows up in discussions where they're needed, gives updates during the community calls, shows a level of involvement. In the same um, note, we have um, a grant that uh, does the Writers Guild cohort. These guys are from TAPTIV, but you see they are they are so entrenched in Writers Guild and Bankless style that you don't literally know that they are an external body, but they are in partnership. We have German Pop. These are examples of people that are practicing most of these things, and then you see the relationship that and the partnership that they share with Bankless DAO is very, very productive and lucrative. So the GMN has a lot of bounties and opportunities for people to get involved with in their server. And you can find out, although GMN uh, publisher is not so much active right now in the Bankless DAO Discord because of so many things they're doing. But at some point, last two seasons, publisher was running... Um, different education sections on how to build smart contracts, how to build stuff. And then, you see, it was very lucrative and they were actually involved with the activities we are doing here in Bank Leicester, aligned with our mission. And you see, at the other end, you don't even know whether we have a partnership deal with them or not. So that's a rough example. Moving over to the next step on how to build cross that relationship, we have suggestion of solutions where they are appropriate and needed. So if you are in business development, you are familiar with sales and marketing, you are familiar with whatever thing it is, and then you maybe have your own process, how you do your things, how you coordinate your activities. You know, it's it's I would say it's very important that you bring in your ideas and thoughts. They might not be, they might not be all of what is needed, but it will help strengthen what is needed. It can help drive a scope squad to what is needed to do something, right? So we don't want to particularly prescribe how people can bring solutions or um, whether it's ethical or maintaining the integrity of bankless brand and all of that. No, that's not what we are here for. We are here to just um, help provide solutions where they are needed. Solutions in terms of relationship, in terms of management with clients, in terms of partnership and all of those things. So these are most of the things we are doing here in the relationship, although the relationship is big. It's big because it cuts across different edges here. And then bots and bounties are two hot topics and good examples in this case. If you hear people debating on how to solve a problem, which we have a solution for, suggest it. So if you are in another server, for instance, you are in the near protocol server and you're hearing them complain, how can we track uh how do how do we track um for instance how do i put it now how do how do we track the progress of people in our community that are taking up bounties and are doing bounties and you have an idea that in bankless DAO, we use the work to track um tasks that are completed when they were completed and have an organized kanban board for it so what what is needed for you is to just bring up your idea 
hello guys this is me um in just in case you you, you, you just in case you don't know, I'm from so so and so place. This is what we do there. Uh, this is how we tackle this problem. In the other hand, you see that you've provided a solution and then you've helped the process and then you've strengthened the partnership you have already with these people. So you can see a rough draft of an example. Hey, uh, for instance, hey, Aloy, have you heard about uh, the work, which may be a viable solution to solve uh, our issues or your issues or your issues of... Um, not being able to track bounties and all of that. So this is a rough uh, ex example of how the solution can be proposed. And then it will be um, selected if it is what is needed. Over to the next step on how you can create or build a cross star relationship that is strong. Scheduling group calls. So just for folks that are joining us now, we have the first step as sourcing for a potential relationship. Just in case you guys want to follow us, if you open the chat box, you can see the link to this presentation is the cheat sheet, so you can save them in your drive. Whenever you are in need of them, you can refer back to them and have an idea of what you want to do and then how to do them. It can serve as a manual that you want to use to train other people and then we have the audio recording as well i'm going to drop it in the education thread in the relationship so that it can be easily assessed and i'm going to pin this we over time when we create the calendar we have all of these resources in the topic so it's easy to um refer back to and then thank you so much guys for hopping in poluati fair okay sama bg um so let's get back to what we have. So for today, what we are discussing is how to build cross-star relationships. And we are discussing the five major steps that are involved in building these cross-star relationships we're talking about. Which the first one, we said sourcing for a potential relationship. And we've run, we've done um, a rundown on that. But if you follow the slides, you have an, a great understanding because it's um, detailed and understandable. The second one we have, bumping elbows, contributing and collecting power-ups. And then the next step for on how you can create and build cross-star relationship, we have suggesting solutions and uh, where they are appropriate and getting involved with them as well. So right now we are discussing something around scheduling group calls. This is a very important um, part of community building. So I'm a big fan of community building. It's what I love to do because at the end of the day, you see, it relieves you of the stress of doing things alone. It relieves you of the stress of having too much to think about and having so much to put or lay your hands on. To, right. So wherever is appropriate, see about scheduling organizational wide collaborative calls and then the intention of this course are uh, for us to get to know each other and find areas to come together or collaborate. Right now, um, all of the guild and project or departments that I'm involved with, we have some sort of uh, group call, a group, um, how do I call it again? A DM group, something like that. So what we do basically is to evaluate. I, I often say something about evaluating our workflow, knowing what we are doing and then how we can get better with what we are doing. These are some of the things you can do in a group call. So if you schedule a group call, just like we conduct weekly sync here as well. So over time in the community where you want to, um, where, you, where you are partnering or where you are showing interest or trying to build a relationship in, you, you can decide to schedule a group call just according to the partnership business you have with them. So you have, for instance, we have um, Journey, who, in the other hand, is doing some stuff with um, the list of cows. So they have the certain KPIs that that are being given to them by Bankless Tao, uh, by the Grants Committee, in the other hand. So at some point, we have some sort of issue with the CRM in tracking their progress. So what I did was to help schedule a group call with Johnny and Erin to discuss how we can help them solve the problems they have, which in the other hand resulted in uh, to what we came up with, building an external CRM for the list of Dow Notion page, land, la, landing page. And it worked out well. So 
doing all of these things will help find areas that you can collaborate more and where and where help needed. So, like I said, as we've witnessed with a few of our relationships here in Bankless style, organizational wide calls to get to know each other have been a pretty great catalyst to help find opportunities to come together as an industry, as a community, or as a group of people. Right? So, um, so sales is not totally a priority in this case. What we call the priority is learning as much as possible about the prospects and um, possible ways possi possible ways to establish relationships, build capital and uh, um, leadership stuffs and all of that, and then earn the rights to present solutions to their problems, right? So you don't you don't suggest a solution to some set of persons if you don't know what their problem is. Uh, for you to figure out what their problem is, you need to be in sync with them. You need to be in a very good and tight relationship with them for you to um, be able to know what's wrong and how you can be of help. These are a few rundowns on how you can schedule group calls and what is the, the main point for why you want to schedule a group call. Right, so this group call is definitely going to help you understand their problems, and then you can propose a solution to their problems. It's going to help you build social capital, establish leadership capital, and then end the right presence, um, present solutions to their problem. It is also a powerful demonstration of the talent and community that we have at Bankless, and a major value add to welcome other communities into our own. So you need to really understand all of these points. Uh, like I said, for people who are joining us right now, welcome. And we, we, I, I've sent the the presentation link in the relationship chat box. So if you open the chat box at the top right area of your screen, you can hop on to the slide and view. And of course, save them wherever you want. But to, when we've been able to build the the calendar and the roster for the education uh, departments uh, education pod. We have all of these resources pinned there, the docs and the audio files, so that at your own convenient time you can go through them. You, it's not a one-time learning process; it's something that you have to practice over time before you can get the best out of what you intend to practice. So, through helping the other organizations get what they want, we are indirectly furthering furthering our vision of onboarding 1 billion people into crypto. So it does not totally need to be 1, million, 1 billion bankless individuals, right? So the more you help educate folks in the Web2 space and people who are curious and are um, naive as well in the space to get so much out of what they intend to do. And the next step for on how you can build cross-star relationships is coordinating and facilitating. So as Bankless style continues to evolve, there will be a major need for facilitators, which we all know. Coordinating projects between guilds, guild members and outside the organization is a lot of a single guild, right? It's a lot for just a single guild. So each guild could have a coordinator which coordinates between the guild and the relationships guild. The function of the relationships guild would be to keep the guild and um, outside organizations aligned, information transparent and other projects that are flowing um, smoothly. So just um, to throw more light on this step, right, is one of the things we 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 need to understand in building cross star relationships is that most of the skills that we are learning here in Bankless style, I call it the learning phase because over time, although I've been doing community building and management for over, over time, operations and administrations, but it strikes different when you are coordinating people that are from different geographical areas. So most of the things you want to understand is how you do not offend people by your literal devices, by your diction, by how you speak and how you respond to them, how you say yes to them, how you say no. So these are a few points that needs to be understood very clearly. Coordinating is a skill, facilitating is a skill. And if you don't have these skills, you can build them right here. So if you get started with building your coordination and facilitation skills, it's going to help you a lot, even when you launch out to other 
communities, maybe other guilds, other projects where these skills are going to be very, be very vital, right? So you would want to learn how to coordinate not only calls, projects, how to lead work groups, how to be productive in different areas. And how can you do that if you don't show interest, if you are not part of, part of um, a working group, you might not necessarily learn how things are done there. So it's, it's just a general principle that you must learn before you are able to do. So you need to um, join a work group. You need to be part of a particular project. You need to get your hands on something. Even if you don't know how to do them, it's never a restriction. Whenever you don't know how to do something, it's never a restriction. It's just an edge for you to get going with what you feel you can know how to do over a given period of time. And then just hopping over those, uh, this is the last slide, and then I can give room for questions. So the objective is not to assert dominion by any means or form. Um, it is, however, intended to take pressure out respected, um, to take pressure our, our respected guilds and guild leaders to be more productive as their best selves with less distractions, having to monitor communications and address concerns. So the essence of learning the, the coordination and facilitation skills or having yourself involved in those areas and the communities that you are doing stops with, you can decide to show interest and help out in any way possible and then see yourself um, leveraging on the opportunities that, that are there. You know, this would also <clears throat> take an extra coordination layer in notion for of having some sort of a private CRM where we could easily assess and relay information in as close to real time as possible. So although I'm, I'm trying to catch up with time, I know we have some more time left, but nevertheless, you can go through all of these um, in your own time. So you have a detailed understanding of what is on this slide and how it can be helpful to you on the case of building relationship across different DAOs, communities, and organizations, right? So a few points that you would want to know, let me go over them once more, is the first step you want to practice when you are trying to build a cluster relationship is to source for a potential relationship. You need to start from sourcing for a potential relationship, a potential client, a potential um, community or products that you want to bring in, that you want to partner with in terms of that. So starting from here, it's going to give you give a great and adequate understanding. So one of the first steps to start is to hover around the, the relationship CRM, check out the products and services, check out the stuffs we offer. So if you have organizations that you would want to you know, get involved with, that is where all of these other ones come in. Bump elbows, for you to for you to um, be able to achieve this, for you to be able to source for a potential relationship, you need to understand that you would have to join in their activities. You need to contribute in the activities of the environment where you're going to source for partnership. You need to collect POAPs if necessary. You would need to suggest solutions where they are appropriate in the products, in the company, in the firm in the community that you are going to look out for partnership with between bank cluster or even your own personal brand. You need to understand that you have to schedule group calls with them if possible and um, maintaining time, sticking to your time is some important thing. So some persons don't take it lightly when you come one minute late from the set time. So from there, right, uh, this is an avenue for you to understand maybe venture capitalists or um, general general business development on and business management as well. So if you have a firm, you have a startup, you have whatever it is, it is a great avenue for you to learn how these things operate in real time. For you to source for a potential client and get them, a potential company and get them, you need to understand that you have to contribute, you have to be entrenched in whatever thing they're doing. You have to be mission aligned as well with them. You would have to bring out your ideas, you know, 
prefer solutions where you they are noticed. And for you to do that, you need to schedule group calls with them. You need to coordinate and facilitate as well with them. All of these things are where you can find out what their problem is and how you can be of help on how you can provide solution to their problems. So with this, we come to the end of this topic, but not totally the end. One thing I would encourage us to do is to um, is to help us fill out the feedback form we have here in the chat box. So if you check out the chat box, you're going to see the feedback form for this section. Help us fit the feedback form so we will know where we can serve you better and how we can help you the way possible. So I'm going to give um, an open floor for anyone that has questions. We have a couple more minutes. That's why I'm trying to fasten up. So if we have any questions, we can possibly know where to tackle them. I have a low PC battery. 